please start sharing the word that I, and, and you know, if I have to title what I want to share today, uh, what in the prophetic is driving you? <laughs> you know, uh, some people use a more stronger word, what in the, something is wrong with you, but I'm going to say, what is the, what in the prophetic is driving you? And uh, I just woke up with that word very strong in my heart this morning to ask you what's driving you. So I'm going to just use one example here of, of a guy called Jehu. And uh, from, uh, I think it's a second Kings, or let me just double check here so I don't give the wrong. Second Kings chapter 9, it says, So Elisha, the prophet, called one of the sons of the prophets. In my book, I write about the unknown prophets. And here's one of the unknown prophets uh, that had to give a major word on behalf of Elisha, who gave this word to him on behalf of Elijah. So Elijah initially gave part of this word. Then Elisha gives it. So yeah, it's passed down three times. Very interesting. I cover it in, in my book, Your Prophetic Release. Anyway, so he says to him, Tap your garments, take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. When you arrive there, look for Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat. I don't know offhand if it's the same Jehoshaphat you know, in Second uh, Chronicles 2020, uh, but it, it could be. Anyway, so go in and have him rise from his fellows, lead him into an inner chamber, then take the flask of oil, pour it on his head and, and say, that says the Lord, I anoint you king over Israel, then open the door and flee, do not linger. Hey, talk about a postman, okay. And uh, it, so anyway, he goes in there, and uh, the young man, I'm picking it up in verse 6, so he rose and went to the house and the young man poured oil on his head, saying to him, this is relevant what I'm reading to you, so you catch something tonight. And uh, the, the young man poured oil on his head, saying, thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anoint you king over the people of the Lord your God. And, and then he carries on and he, he adds to the word, I think that Elijah gave initially as well. So he's, uh, he says, uh, and you shall strike down the house of Ahab, your master. Now, this is upon Jehu, okay? That I may avenge on Jezebel the blood of my servants, the prophets, the blood of all the servants of the Lord, for the whole house of Ahab, Ahab shall perish. He makes this big prophecy, and he talks about the dog shall eat Jezebel in the territory of Jezreel, none shall bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. And now look, look at this, verse 11. When Jehu came out, to the servants of his master, they said to him, is it all, is all well? Why did this mad fellow come to you? Very interesting. Uh, in the Old Testament, prophets weren't always accepted. You know, some of them, when you look at Jeremiah, my goodness, uh, the prophets, some of them weren't accepted. Some of them were perverted. So anyway, they said, <laughs> uh, why did this mad fellow come to you? And he said to, the, so Jehu just acted as if, you know, nothing was, you know, it was fine. He says, you know, this fellow in his talk, he had to cover it. And they said, that is not true. Tell us now, because, you know, somehow people know when a true prophet speaks. And uh, anyway, he, 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 he says, well, let me read it. He says, they, and he said thus, and so he spoke to me saying, thus says the Lord, this, watch the, Watch the reaction of this madman all of a sudden. Thus says the Lord, I anoint you king of Israel. Then in haste, every man of them took his garment and put it under him on the bare steps. And they blew the trumpet and proclaimed, Jehu is king. So suddenly this mad fellow's word comes to pass. Anyway, cut a long story short, we come down the, the further to the chapter. Now, now, there's a part where Jehu now goes and he's going to go and sort Jezebel out. Now, you must understand this man is, is he acted on prophecy. You've got to see this. While Elijah, who, who moved in the supernatural power of God, ran from Jezebel, not once do we hear of Jehu ever operating one miracle, he runs to Jezebel. What in the prophetic is driving you? Now watch this. So 
he goes and he, he, he's riding now his chariot or something. So apparently where he's going, I, I don't fully understand how they could see from a far away. So they send a messenger out to see who's coming. So Jehu just says, uh, uh, you know, if you come for peace, uh, and uh, Jehu says, get behind me, you know. So the authority, man. So the guy just falls in behind him. And three times it happens. The third time it happens, the king himself comes, and when he sees it's Jehu, he runs for his life. Jehu shoots him, kills him, keeps on riding. Then watch this now. So the watchmen are still watching all this going on. I don't know how they could see it so far, whatever, because it's like it's like almost a dragged out story, but it happens in, as a Constantino. So in verse. Uh, Let's pick it up at verse 20. This, this is the verse I really want to highlight to you. Again, the watchman reported, he reached them, but he's not coming back. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he drives furiously. How can people, so what drives you? What, what, what literally drives you? What is driving the core of your being? Uh, what what motives of driving you? What uh, I heard a very and I'll talk about that on another time. Uh, what is pushing you in life? What is what is making your wheels go? And so yeah, a prophetic word. So maybe I should ask this as well. What prophetic word have you received that maybe you are not following through? Now I need to give I think two examples. The first one. Some of you know this, excuse me, my eyes are just a bit itchy. Some of you know this, that I prophesied over a man, uh, I don't know how many years ago, 2003, 2004. A man called Mocheng Mocheng, who was our driver. And uh, I found out when I called him up for a word of prophecy, which was a conference in Mafeking, Mahiking. And uh, so I thought, let me bless my driver with a word. <laughs> Little did I know what's going on. Anyway, cut a long story short, found out he was a judge. And then the Lord said to me to tell him, you will be chief justice of South Africa. He rejected it. And for four years, three or four years. But then, listen to me. Now, this is, this is the part that I want to get to you. Then after about three or four years, God began to get on his case and said, this is a word from God. You, you better do something about it. You see, you've got to take action. Jehu took action on the word. The word was he's going to sort Jezebel out. He's going to ring her bell, Jezebel, <laughs> you know. And uh, so Jehu took action on the word. He, 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 faith without works is dead. So Jehu drove. What was driving Jehu? The prophetic word. He, he was, he, I mean, everyone was scared of Jezebel. Who knows? His heart was beating. I don't know. But I tell you what, one thing I know, when a true prophetic word comes upon you, it gives you boldness beyond your enemies. It gives you boldness to go and actually accomplish the, the word of the Lord. Uh, and, and so that's why I, I said in the beginning, what the prophetic is driving you. So, so Chief Justice went on two 40-day fasts, a whole lot of other fasts, and he began to pray and began to push in. And, he, and when he was chosen out of a whole lot of people, I don't know the whole scenario. I still haven't read it or whatever. But, it, but he, he was challenged because everybody knew he was a Christian. And so the, the media were on him, the gays, the lesbians, the, the, the white people who were, you know, like scared of him or whatever. He, you know, I just heard bits and pieces. Some of the, you know, other races attacked him. And uh, he apparently boldly and publicly said, God said, he didn't mention my name, but he said, God said, I'm going to be Chief Justice. And if God said I'm going to be Chief Justice, I will be Chief Justice. Cut a long story short, man out of, it was, a, it must have been, totally supernatural he gets chosen as chief justice just to let you know and I'm, I've, I've been saying this over and over that that same time I gave him the word to be chief justice I did mention to him about being president of our country just throwing it in 
And uh, we've kept it under lock and key until now we feel to release it. And so now he's... Because we need to all pray. Yeah, he's, he is exercising his faith for that right now as we talk. And I uh, went and laid hands on him in his office, anointed him with oil one or two years ago and prophesied the, the word again. I, I reminded him of the word and I, in fact, I anointed him then with oil. Both my wife and I, we've got it on video. We keep it, you know, not to, it's not for public use. Um, he's got it, a copy. So we've done that, you know, anyway. So I, I want to say to you, there's, there's someone else now that I thought about today who did exactly the same, who, who pushed their way through a prophetic word until it happened in their life. Uh, it might come to me just now. So look at how interesting this is. How did people recognize Jehu? They recognized him by his driving. I mean, that's amazing. There was only one man that drove a chariot and, and he drove it fierce, furiously. In other words, Jehu was a different kind of a being. Now, what I want to felt the Lord say I must put on you today. What in the prophetic is driving you? What word? Because if you understand, I think in, in Romans, uh, gosh, 16, 26, I think it is. It, it, the word of God calls itself prophetic, the, the prophetic scriptures. So that's number one, what's going to drive you is the word of God. How are you allowing the word to drive you? Let's look at Jesus quickly. And I've shared this before, but sometimes I have to repeat it because it comes up in different contexts when I'm sharing. And I trust you're getting something out of this. Well, yeah. In Mark 1 verse 12, the Bible says that the Spirit of God drove Jesus into the wilderness. Drove him. <laughs> when you look at that word drove, it either means to thrust or cast out. It's exactly the same word. Well, let, 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 me, let me leave it there. So the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the wilderness. Jesus obviously submitted to the driving force of the Holy Spirit. You must remember, Jesus knew he was to be the Savior. He knew it from a child. He knew it, he knew it at least at the age of 12. Because remember when he was lost, his dad came looking for him and his mom, what did he say to them? Do you not know I must be about my father's business? He's talking to his earthly father. In the natural, that would be such cheek. He's yeah. talking to Joseph and he says, do you not know? that I must be about my father's business. He didn't even use the word heavenly father. Yeah, I'll tell you what, man, that, that's mind-blowing stuff at that age. Then he begins to fulfill his, his word. He goes into the wilderness. Uh, no, no, Jesus, the Bible says, the Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness to pray and fast. It wasn't Jesus' idea. Jesus comes and he, he, after 40 days of prayer and fasting, he comes out and then the Bible says in, in the Gospel of Mark that, and I don't know which one comes first, but, but it's a, I'm going to show you a principle here about driving. Who are you allowing to drive you? When Jesus came back, the Bible says, and it's exactly the same Greek word, he came back and he drove out demons. And then later on, it says he drove out the money changers. Remember, it's exactly the same Greek word, ekbalo. <laughs> and that word drive, one of the meanings is that you take something and you throw it with such force, you don't care where it lands. That's how hard the Spirit pushed him into the wilderness. It must have been the same at Gethsemane. Jesus was driven by the Spirit all of his ministry. So even at Gethsemane, Jesus didn't want to go through that. Remember, he had to pray three times, but he was under the steering wheel of the Holy Spirit. He was being driven by the Spirit. Thank God he submitted. But look at this now. To the degree Jesus was allowed himself to be driven by the Spirit, he had the equal power to drive out demons and ungodly men. So to the degree you allow the Spirit of God to drive you, that same force, you know, like you get those metal balls on a string and you let the one gun, it, it hits and then it knocks the others and 
you know, I think it's Newton's first law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So what is driving you? You need to ask yourself, is it the flesh or is it the spirit? And it's very important because the Bible says if the flesh drives you, you will reap corruption. But if the spirit drives you, you'll reap eternal life. I know the scripture doesn't exactly say that, but it's, it, it implies that. Those that are led by the spirit, you know, they are the true sons of God. And the Bible says if you sow to the flesh, you'll reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you reap eternal life. And obviously the benefits that go with that. So I want to ask you again, what's driving you? Who's driving you? What spirit is driving you? Are you naturally in the flesh ambitious? Because some people bump their head so hard, they've got knob carries on their head. You know, they look like... Uh, the <laughs> <laughs> they look like Shrek, you know, with all the doors they're trying to knock open. And Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burdens light. If you allow me to drive you, I will drive you into green pastures. I'll make you lie down in green pastures beside the still waters in the right paths to bring honor to my name. It's very important what drives you. That's why Paul said, I die daily so that I don't drive myself. Remember, at one stage, Paul, his own ambition was driving him. Even as a religious person, he was the Pharisee of Pharisees. He was a, a scribe of all scribes or whatever. He was top of, top of his class. But it was all wrong. You understand? So you can... Uh, you know, there's people that, that, that are charismatic and they use their charismatic ability to build big ministries, but, but the ministry foundation is on a charismatic gift, not on the motives of God. That's why I am so scared of going overboard because in 2 John 2 verse 9, it's, it, it indicates some people have gone too far. That is what we call they've gone overboard for the wrong reason. We need to go overboard like Peter. <laughs> so we need to be careful what drives us, what motivates us, what's our intention, what's our, what's our purpose, what's the cause. Oh, this is the other part that I wanted to bring out. And I don't know why I'm bringing this out, but here's an example. Okay, let me say this. Oh, I didn't read it. No, let me read the rest of the story. That's where I'm picking up. I need to say something. Now, some of you are not going to like what I'm about to say, but I've got to say it. Um, watch this now. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Verse 30 of Second. Kings 9, uh, and there's a reason I want to read this. When Jehu came to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out the window. I want to tell you, a woman who puts too much makeup on, be careful of. Listen to me now. Give her, I'll give you a true story. I won't mention names. We had a lady in our church who put makeup on. I only knew her for the makeup she had on. But one day, <laughs> listen to you, I know it's funny, but this is the truth. One day my wife and I had to go to her house very early in the morning. <laughs> I don't know what was the emergency, but we knocked at her door very early. <laughs> And she came out and I stood back a couple of steps because this very ugly looking lady came out. That's not nice. No, it's, it's not nice, but you know why? I was so used to seeing her with makeup on that when she never had makeup on, it looked ugly to me. It reminded me, and I'm going to throw this in. It, it, it was a bit shocking. It was I very shocking. I, took shocking. I actually took steps back because of the... Of, of, uh, uh, I didn't see her in a natural state. Mm. Here's another incident. She, she didn't look like the same person. She, no, man, it was shocking to me. I, I literally took steps back. Now, another incident like this happened to me. 
Many years ago, when I was still in the Mems and Toti, I was part of a leadership of a church there, and we used to have ministers fraternals. And every, I think it was every Wednesday or something, all the ministers in Toti used to meet at different pastors' churches. So there was this one pastor of a particular denomination that had normal clothes on, you know, and we all we, we went to his church and whatever, and we went around. Then one day they decided to start having communion together. <laughs> yes, like I'm being the truth now, honestly. <laughs> you misunderstand me. I'm I'm a prophet in training. Okay, uh, prophets have the, one of their worst enemies are religious devils, a religious spirit. You got to understand that. Jesus only fought the Pharisees more than anyone else. He was heavy against them. Woe unto you. The word woe means curses unto you. Uh, you know, whitewashed tombs, vipers, uh, uh, blind guides. You know, he, he, Jesus was unto the Pharisees, but he loved everyone very much. So we go to this one main line. I'm not going to mention what it is. To have communion. Now, this, this pastor... That's what I'm going to call him for now. He's, he says to us, wait over here. And uh, now I'm not used as, I'm, I'm not even a pastor. I'm one of the leadership. We, we all sit in there. <laughs> and the next moment, now, now God hasn't struck me down dead for saying this yet. But this was my impression. When he, when he opened the curtains... And he came out, it was Dracula. Because he came out in all this religious garb that was so overwhelming and so intimidating that I refused to have communion. I said, I'm not having communion with that religious devil. Why did he have to put on that and intimidate us with all this? That's why I'm not into this. It's like a cloak. And cloak and a hat. And, 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 and he came out yeah. and I tell you what, I just I said to the pastor, that's it. You can shoot me. You can kick me out of your church. I am not having communion. And that, but I, but I tell you what, you know, it was crazy. So I need you to know when people have to overdo things on themselves and they're not normal, be very careful of a religious spirit. When people are too smooth or manipulating or, or too overdressed, I would be very careful. In fact, the Bible talks about that. Mm. It says that those are for kings. Eloquent clothing is for kings. Now, I'm, I'm not against clothing, but I've noticed people who overdress, women and men who overdress, who, and women who overpaint themselves. I'm just, and there's I'm just nothing saying that. wrong with makeup. With makeup. You put it's, makeup on. I put makeup on. There's nothing wrong with it. We're not against it at all. It's very cool. I'm, I'm using makeup, some clothing. Of, some of us need a little yeah. bit of it, you know. Um, I mean, I heard that Mike Murdoch was given a Royals Royce. Yeah. And he's tried to give it away two times and people have refused it. That's he's not, exactly. he doesn't need to drive a Royals Royce. You know what I'm saying? This is, I just heard that recently. I think, I think people that overdo things sometimes is they're trying to cover up, you know, that dress the outside too much, you know, is there's a cover up going on of what's really going on inside. And, um, but it's nothing wrong with dressing nice, nothing wrong with looking nice, but sometimes it's too much. Yeah. Like that lady with, with the makeup, you know. And eventually, let me just tell you about that lady. Let me, let me be honest with you. My wife was pregnant with my last born son, Israel. And she was at her, at her very end. And so right near the end, my wife start, stopped coming to church. And we used to have you know morning services and evening services. And when she noticed my wife wasn't yeah. there, suddenly, all of a sudden, yeah. she came to church with these many, many skirts, dull to the heel, yeah. sat in the front row, and when she was dancing, she let all her ministry show. When she sat down, she opened her legs very wide and she was, and, and then she started winking at me. So the first Sunday I was doff. 
I just thought, you know. Thank God. But when it happened the next Sunday, I came to my wife. I said, Deb, this is what so and so is doing. Please sort her out because it's, uh, I can see it's, uh, she's trying to seduce me. You see, I, I, didn't, I didn't go with it because I knew I don't want to lose my ministry. I don't want to lose my wife. I don't want to lose my marriage. I don't want to lose, come on, man. I don't lose my salvation. Mm -hmm. And she, she was a very attractive woman with nice legs, nice body, nice mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. When she had makeup on, she looked very attractive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but she started doing that. Yeah, so. there was definitely uh, undercover stuff. Yeah. And so me with my big round eight-month-old belly. No, we found out she'd been sleeping <laughs> with young boys as well, yeah, seducing the neighbor's boys. Son. And, yeah, her best friend's son. She had the best, so, the best you know. friend's son and hurt the family so badly. Yeah. And no, she's not listening and she's moved on. She, I think she lives in the UK now. Yeah. And I do pray for her. I do. But uh, she really had a hidden agenda, and uh, she did this while I was heavily pregnant. And uh, thank God that we have the relationship that we do have. Oh, absolutely. Uh, of honesty Looking and at chances. openness. And the thing is, you can lose everything like that. That's what you ladies, you can let, let me just say, just yeah. don't, don't show your cleavages. Yeah. You know, lo and behold, you know. And don't, uh, don't, wear, don't, don't wear pants that looks like it's yes, been painted on it, you. Because you you know? it pays to advertise. What you advertise, you will. If you advertise yeah. the, with the flesh, you'll get the flesh. Yeah, so be careful. You uh, know, I've, like I've had to get hard do. on my own daughter. Yeah. You know, even my daughter. You'll, you, you can ask her, Michelle, beautiful, attractive. Yeah. Got the whole package deal. Yeah. And, and if my daughter just posted certain pictures on Facebook, I would get onto her case. I don't believe that, uh, if, if, that uh, yeah, you know, like the, if you, this woman that pout their lips and all that, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. There's a guy out there that, that, that doesn't see you trying to be cute. He just sees, hey, you're asking him to come to bed. Yeah. I'm a man. I know what I'm Th talking that's, about. That's the problem, Lovey, is that sure. women do Jezebel's, not, yeah. they do not understand what goes on in the mind of a man. Yeah. Um, helping him, helping you. Yeah, it, 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 it's happening. Being it, a father it, The thing tonight. is, it's in the church. And it's, it's all around. It's rife in the we, church. We, you know, like, be very careful. You know, like that lady, the way she put on her makeup, I mean, she drew red lines around her lips. And I thought it was normal it, 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 at no, first. No, it was shocking. Yeah. Even I was, you know, and I just think it is so important to be modest and to, you know, um, be private with your body and to be private with, with the way you are and just be, be very careful. You, you, you could be stumbling a, a, or helping break another marriage. You don't know that you're doing that. You know, you've got to be very careful. And also, I, I and think... And you'll attract the wrong man. I think adultery starts with the eyes. It starts with the look. There's a look. It you does, know. because the Bible and, says if a man looks yeah, at a woman to lust after yeah. her, he's already committed adultery in his heart. And I think it's important to... Like, like Paul is saying yeah, to be modest and to cover up your body because I mean you don't have to walk around looking like a nun you know God's not expecting us to look like that obviously we can be stylish and and attractive and whatnot but at the same time you know you know like Deb's saying you know beauty comes from within it it, it really does come from within but the thing is marriage is a covenant you make with one another. And for single girls and out there, they'll draw I, the wrong I just appreciate notice. my husband being, and for the men that are listening here, you know, it's important to be honest. And, you know, at the end of the day, this is just something that I've observed, Pastor Richard, is the man never leaves his wife for the girlfriend. Never. Never. And I've also observed that he will play around and fool around, but at the end of the day, he will never leave his wife and children. And then also, uh, uh, if you are going to attract somebody with the way you look, your physical look, then that's all that relationship. The foundation is just the physical, and it was it will fizzle out because when you get older, uh, things change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, things begin to change, and. You know, you have to build your relationships on friendships. This is where the whole world has got mm. it wrong. 
they think if, if we build it on sex or uh, the way you look mm -hmm. or I just use this one and I use this one and this one to have a, a fun time. The whole world has got it wrong. The, in church, we must have friendships. Him and I, we were friends way, 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 way long before we were lovers. And uh, we are still the best friends today. Than we actually are each other's best friend. Yeah. We don't have any other There's best no friends, by the way. And that's another thing too. A lot of people think, okay, well, I, I'm married, but I, I have a friend of the opposite sex. Listen to me. You're fooling yourself. There is no such thing. We often have couples say to us, you know, my husband's got this woman at work. They're just friends. Please. That's not friendship. That is a adulterous affair waiting to happen. You've got to be very careful, you know, and... Uh, You've got to be careful. Even in the church, you've got to be careful. You can't like, okay, I'm going to go and pray in that corner. No corners. No corners. No, my husband does not counsel any woman on his own. I don't counsel men on my own. We keep it clean over and above board. We don't even like our men. Uh, uh, like if church is finished and this little dolly bird is walking up the road from church or whatever, and he's by himself, we don't, we don't want him to pick her up and drive her home. Yeah. Amen, JP. So, yeah. <laughs> so we don't even like that because mm -hmm. she will get the wrong idea. You know, I heard Mike Murdoch saying the other day, he said a compliment is not love. I said it to you the other day. Okay. And, you know, it doesn't mean because somebody says to you, oh, you got nice hair or, oh, you know, uh, you're looking good today. You know, that doesn't mean he wants to go to bed with you. You know what I'm saying? That's what Mike Murdoch actually said. You need to work these things out. But I'll say if you're a husband and you haven't complimented your wife, why are you complimenting someone else? Mm, Auntie Jazzy. You know, Auntie Jazzy, you know. You're ringing Jazzy's bell. And you know, the devil is flipping around every corner looking to destroy covenants he's yeah, looking yeah. to make you become a covenant breaker even with god even if he can get you to break your prayer life and he can break your your time spent with god or or you know or, or break you from from giving to the lord uh, bringing the tithes to the lord or he can get you to start hating somebody you know, he, he is always busy trying to get us to break the rules. And so it is important for us to keep it clean. We have to keep things clean. For the sake of your eternal and destiny. And that same lady with the makeup and did the flashing, I mean, I got hold of her. Mm. I had a round tummy. <laughs> Believe me, when I was pregnant, I was pregnant. I was huge and I went uh, called her to the house who was she sorry I called her to the house and um, I waited till my husband wasn't there no one else was around and I said to her this is I didn't ask her have you been doing that I told her this because I had more confidence in what my husband said than what she she had nothing to say to me I just wanted to tell her off and I think it's another thing too if you feel something is in the way and it's disturbing your covenant then you have every right under the sun to deal with it amen and I called her to the house and I said to her you have been doing this and you've been doing that and you've been doing that and you've been doing that and I wasn't at church you have no right to do that kind of a behave like that when I'm not around or in front of anybody else. And I just said to her, I don't want to see you again. Please, please leave. And uh, so uh, that was the yeah. first and the very last yeah. time I ever did that. But you know, your marriage is very important. It is, it, it's, it's so vital that you take care and look after your marriage because it is sacred. It's something that God has blessed you with. He has given you a gift 
and you need to build into your marriage you need to build into one another and you know what if somebody else is looking for compliments outside of the marriage or you know you're feeling kind of nice around another person it's because the other one is not doing it you you understand that we need to speak into each other's lives hypna we are we are buds we we absolutely love one another and i will do anything for him and uh, he would do but anything for me you know i have to be very careful what i even ask for because my husband will actually just bless me and so you know these times of that i just don't think we should spend anything i won't even tell him i just keep quiet because i know his heart is to bless me but i tell you what if i see something that is not right i will actually deal with it mm. and um yeah and then we found out later that her best friend that same lady's best friend um a very nice lady who was actually deaf her best friend was deaf and she had gone and had an affair with her best friend's son mm. and i think that that is way below the belt to do something like that you know mm. so please look at your marriage as sacred and the person that you're with is sacred speak well to one another speak well to one another care for one another speak into each other's lives compliment one another oh my gosh how men love being complimented <laughs> you know and men are just they love to be praised by their wives they need it they need to you know, I often will say to my husband, you know, I think you did that so well, you know, and he's like, really? Did I? You know, and I say, yeah, I, I, I really, I really think you did, you know, and it's so important to build marriages. It's called investment. You must invest in that relationship because it's God given. Same with your children. Invest as much as you can. You know, I, I try every Monday to try and see my granddaughter. I know we're not supposed to be visiting families. And I hope there's no police online, but God bless you. It's too late. I've been there, done that, gone, left already. But I, I invest as much as I can in my granddaughter because she's going to be an adult one day. And it was so cute because when I walked in there today, she just put her arms around me and she said, I love you so much, Granny. And but and help me tight and i said to her i love you so much katie katie you know and so every relationship you know um you know every relationship is absolutely valuable and that god is given to you you'll only answer for the ones he's given you don't worry about the person at the office you can be fairly civil with people around you but it's those precious ones god has given you your wife go home tonight and say nice words hold one another care for one another mm. speak to one another encourage one another just a little tip guys the woman love compliments find something even if it's just her cooking or the way she keeps the house tidy and you know it's not a woman's job to keep the house clean it's not a job it's just worked out that way that women do the cleaning you know i think we can multitask better than men but um you know do you know how wonderful it is when your wife cleans at least you live in cleanliness you know and mm. or make sure there's fresh towels or stuff like that just appreciate just appreciate appreciate and your husbands that work and they earn salaries they work hard all day and they carry the stress. Some of them can't even sleep at night with this COVID. I think it's hit so many people. Mm. You know, like, just invest, just invest. Invest as much as you can. But I tell you what, that lady was the first and the very last that ever tried anything. No, there's others that try that luck. They do try, but I will not <coughs> tolerate it and I will deal with it. Mm. And even if I'm 80 years old, I still will deal with it. I might be, be have a little crooked finger, but I will <laughs> deal yeah, with Pastor it. You Nelly, know? Pastor Nelly Roberts. Hey, she's just there come as I said Pastor her Nelly. name. Pastor Nelly, I'm going to say something that you did too. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Nelly had a woman in their church write 
her husband a love letter Remember and, say, that yeah, and say he must divorce her <laughs> uh, 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 and marry him. And Pastor Nelly got up publicly, yeah. read the note publicly, and if I'm not mistaken, told the lady when she can get off the bus. Yes. And you've got to confront. We, yes. I grew up with a very good a friend of, of ours mm -hmm. who was actually my brother's girlfriend for many years, who eventually went into the ministry, listen to this, with, a, with another man, and they had about three children. And one day, a young yeah. floozy, I call her, came up to her and said, in front of her and her husband said, I'm going to marry, I'm going to marry your husband. And she never confronted the issue. And this woman used to bake him cakes and, yeah. and be all over her husband. Yeah. Five years later, cut a long story yeah. short, he ended up marrying that woman. He left Divorcing left his, his wife. Love. He left the ministry. Huh. Backslid. He's a big biker somewhere in Cape Town now because the wife never confronted the man. I don't know why we turn this way. See, this is how the That's prophetic how goes. The Lord does it. Uh, it's, can you see? We, we Thank you for watching. We know you received something encouraging to empower your relationship with Christ. Please take advantage of our other materials by Richard and Deborah. Should you desire to bless and support this ministry, please use the following details to impart your blessing. May the Lord return the favor to you a thousandfold according to Deuteronomy 1 verse 11. Should you be in the vicinity of Peter Marisburg in KZN, you are welcome to attend our church service at International Christian Center Peter Marisburg, located at 28 Pilot Road, Epworth. Our times are as follows. During our summer months, we meet from October until the end of April at 8 a.m. in the morning. During our winter months, from May till the end of September, we meet at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have never surrendered your life to Christ or need to recommit to the Lord Jesus, please pray this prayer to God now. Dear God, our Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying for my sins. As I ask you to forgive and cleanse me of all of my sins by the power of your shed blood, I receive you as my Savior, Lord and friend. As you make me your child today, thank you again, Father, for the indescribable gift of eternal life in Jesus' name. Amen. Let the Lord lead you to a Bible-based church. Alternatively, contact us to be of assistance in this important next step of your relationship with Christ. God bless Richard and Deborah Gray. And God bless you and do have a God-filled life with Jesus Christ.